Hello, I'm Yoko, and this is a side video for my Galaxy Clan series, which you can find a playlist for linked below or in a card above, as I'll be referencing cats from my main clan here and there in this video. A few of you have been interested in how Galaxy Clan's neighboring clans are doing lately, since I did introduce them and I played them year by year alongside Galaxy Clan. I don't pay as close attention to these clans to make full-on videos like Galaxy Clan, but I'm going to go over some of the more important or notable characters in each clan such as the leader, deputy, medicine cat, and anyone else I might find important. This will be a more casual video where we basically just get a sneak peek at some of our neighbors and see how they're doing. This also takes place by the end of year 6, and at the time of writing this, I hadn't played year 7 for any of the clans, but as of now, I actually have. I'll be going from the clan we get along the best with to the clan that we get along the worst with, like I did at the end of year 3. And I think it's the same order. But yeah, with that said, let's take a look at Bug Clan. This will also be more casual drawings rather than the lineup style that Galaxy Clan videos have. Bug Clan is on its second leader after Holly Star passed away about three years ago, I think. Luckily, the 75 Moon Old Heather Star is a compassionate leader, and relationships between Bug, Bug Clan and Galaxy Clan have remained on good terms. She is a kind leader that always makes sure everyone is well taken care of and feels welcome in her clan. Unfortunately, cats outside her clan see her kindness as weakness. Bug Clan is often bullied where their cats are compared to actual bugs that get squished on the faces of monsters, referencing the many thunder paths that run through the territory and the injuries sustained from them. Heather Star's mate is the 73 moon old responsible branch skip, who was drawn in my year free drawing as an example of Bug Clan's tragedies, as he lost a leg to an injury on the thunder path. Luckily, as moons have gone by, Bug Clan have adopted their treacherous territory and have adapted well. They haven't had any bad accidents lately, but Heather Star and Branchkip have lost a child to them in the past. While they have had three litters, it seems that Heather Star's body might only be capable of having one kitten per litter. We'll get into the kits later. Branchkip has not technically retired, but he grew a fear of being outside and never ventures too far from the camp after his incident. Unless he's accompanied by Heather Star. He's healed, but there's a fear that keeps him confined. While in camp, he usually helps out with reinforcing dens and is a bit of a construction worker. He also lends a hand to the deputy with organizing. Speaking of, Bug Clan's deputy is Wet Moon, a 77 moon old charismatic tomcat. He was originally a loner, but everyone in the camp loves him and he's an absolute charmer. I won't be drawing them for the sake of time, but he has a mate named Darktail, who ironically lost her tail, and they have three children named Mint Drop, Bramble Cloud, and Sheep Paw. Unfortunately, he had another kit named Golden Paw, but she was killed by a dog on her very first day out of camp. Bug Clan has actually had four apprentices die in various ways so far. Like I said, Bug Clan has a lot of tragedies, and Galaxy Clan likes to stand up for them on gatherings. Wet Moon is actually a little cautious of this help, as he knows that makes the clan look even weaker, and he wants to build a stronger reputation to the clan that took him in. Heading over to the medicine cat den, Shade Needle is the cold 123 moon old she cat who has been the medicine cat since Bug Clan's founding, and she's responsible for saving her badly hurt clanmates after monsters hurt them. She is a prickly cat and the clan is a little intimidated by her. She will definitely scold you for being a mouse brain the entire time she wraps your wound. She had been close with Poppy Wish back when she was around and she misses her friend. About two years ago she lost her apprentice leaf stem who had been a 53 moon old playful tom due to an accident involving a rock slide, and she immediately went to the nursery to seek a potential new apprentice, as she does not want to be the only medicine cat in her, tr in her very troubled clan. There she found a kit who is now named Blossom Whisker. She is a trans ferdy moon old thoughtful she cat. While she was hesitant due to Shade Needle's scary vibe, she stepped up to the task and is doing great. She's been trying to convince Shade Needle it's okay to retire and she can handle things, but Shade Needle is stubborn. Blossom Whisker gets along well with Lake Tree as well, because before Twig Claw's death, Blossom Whisker could relate to having basically a twin who's a warrior that gets into way too much trouble. As Blossom Whisker has ne a nearly identical confident sister named Night Shadow. After Twig Claw's passing, she offered support to Lake Tree, and I like to imagine they're pretty close. Blossom Whisker can't imagine what she would do without her sister around. And as for notable warriors in the clan, I'm just going to show you Heather Star and Branch Gip's two living kits. The 23 moon old Clever Frift Kite, and his sister, the 13 moon old Adventurous Blaze Hair, who I made a moon younger by accident on the drawing, so oops. 
Thriftkite is a crafty guy who helps think of ways to make life in the clan easier. He's got himself in a compassionate girlfriend, and he's been talking on and on about how he can't wait to have kids. He was excited to have a little sister since his older sister Fallen Paw had passed away before he even met her. And he was the only one in his litter. He tagged along on Blaze Hair's patrols when she was an apprentice whenever he could, and he's a bit of a protective big brother. Blaze Hair, however, is a free spirit and has had a few occasions snuck out on solo patrols seeking adventure, despite being an apprentice. She's always been curious about other clans, and some may say she's a bit too chatty at gatherings sometimes. Also interesting, both the siblings have a strong connection to Star Clan. But with that said, that's Bug Clan, so we're gonna move on to Sharp Clan now. The leader still being the playful Otter Star, who is now 182 moons old and the first leader of this clan. I've mentioned he definitely had a connection with Odd before the clans were founded, which led her to naming a kit after him. And back in year three, I mentioned that his age seemed to be getting to his decisions, and that has only been getting worse recently. He's a happy guy, but age has definitely affected him. He's forgotten some warriors that have died and is often with the medicine cats. As a clan founder, he doesn't even have nine lives, by the way. He only has one. Unfortunately, I don't think this old guy has much longer, but who knows? Maybe he's immortal. A true Misty Star over here. Luckily, his old, slightly scary deputy from Year Free, Barry Eyes, has been replaced by another cat named Barry. But this time, he's the loving 66-moon-old Barry Brook, who looks after Otter Star a lot. Barry Brook also has the nervous 84-moon-old Sun Whisker as his mate, but unfortunately, they do not have any living kids. It seems in the face of the not-so-motivating leadership, half the clan is nervous and or like more reserved, while the other half are wild and do whatever they want, worsening relationships with other clans in the process. Sharp Clan cats are defensive and snappy due to their territory being full of dogs and rogues that seem to enjoy taking down their members. I've decided that this is the same rogue group that turned their sights on Galaxy Clan last year, and that their general territory they hang out with is right near Sharp Clan. Honestly, most of Sharp Clan are former loners or, or former kitty pets. They hide these struggles though and they act like everything's fine, but other clans can't help but notice they seem to lose cats quite a lot. But Barry Brook is doing his best to keep his clan together. Going over to the Medicine Cat Den, we have the 41 moon old confident Mint Dapple and his apprentice, the 6 moon old faithful Lightpaw. I can imagine Lightpaw and Cinderpaw possibly becoming friends since they're around the same age and they're training to be medicine cats. Lightpaw is also the only apprentice at all in Sharp Clan, and some of the warriors are actually a little upset that he became a medicine cat because they're itching to get an apprentice of their own. Mint Dapple usually just snaps at them, saying not to come crying to them when they're hurt and have to deal with their own injuries. Lightpaw's a little nervous since his parents aren't the most supportive, but he has faith that Star Clan is guiding him down the right path, as he's been seeing Star Clan cats guiding him since practically day one, despite him not having any true clan blood himself. And speaking of his parents, here's his mom, the fierce 114 moon old former kitty pet, Makwa Rump. Makwa Rump. No idea how to say that. I also have no idea if her kitty pet name was Makwa Rump or Makwa or Makwa and she added Rump when she joined the clan. I don't know which one is which. Her mate is the bold 119 moon old former loner Fox. I also kind of think Fox is the father of Russet from the rogue group, though Fox had never been involved in the gang. They are about to be elders and are disappointed that their one kit is not going to follow in their footsteps of being strong warriors. They are two cats who yowl the loudest about picking on other clans like Bug Clan and how Sharp Clan needs to be seen as scary to chase off attacker attackers. I imagine they will be very loud and cranky elders in a few moons. I'm hoping they come around to their son eventually too. And I won't be going into them with drawings, but I just want to list off some of my favorite names in Sharp Clan because they have some good ones. Sharp Clan has cats named Snake Mouse, Ice Coral, Water Flame, and Goldfish. Goldfish in particular, I kind of love. He's shameless. But with that said, let's move on to the last clan, the one we are the most familiar with, Creek Clan. Kestrel Star is still leader at 75 moons old, and she has a hatred for Galaxy Clan after the battle, where her mate Yellow Hollow and another cat named Kenny was killed. At the time of the battle, she actually had a kitten in the nursery as well, but didn't want to seem weak by letting Galaxy Clan know that. 
Unfortunately, that kit later died in his apprentice due to an accident involving a deadly snake bite. Kestrel Star has free living children though, and we'll get into them later. After two leaders before her came and went, she rules Creek Clan with no nonsense, and they've decided to no longer invite kitty pets after deeming them not the strongest fighters. She encourages her warriors to pick on those they believe deserve to be looked down upon, and to always act like they're the best because they are the best. Kestrel Star has also killed an enemy from her past, but we'll get into that later. Creek Clan's deputy is the compassionate 72 moon old Smallfoot, who the clan was not too fond of, especially after how quickly he had been defeated during the Battle of Galaxy Clan. I believe he was the first one to retreat. Kestrel Star didn't have many options of who she thought would make a good deputy, and had also had an apprentice before that, so he kind of got the position by default. He's a good organizer and strategist, but the clan doesn't really respect him, and Kestrel Star doesn't think he'd be a good leader. She hasn't felt the need to replace him yet, as she still has some lives to go, but she's gonna replace him any day now, honestly. Moving on to the medicine cat, then, we have the 49 moodled Insecure Slate Aster. There technically is another medicine cat, but Dustleg is 142 moons old, and Slate Aster allowed him to peacefully retire, encouraging him that she has it handled. She's on the lookout for an apprentice right now, and one has caught her eye, but there's a very scary obstacle that we'll get into later. She's a nervous cat and feels a lot of shame at half-moon meetings when she has to face the medicine cats of the other clans. She wishes her clan didn't have to be so mean, and she didn't have to deal with everything. Luckily, the medicine cats have their own connections beyond clan borders, and they're not mean to her or anything. She feels a little guilty around Lake Tree in particular, as Slate Aster's dad was actually the cruel Cinderclaw that toyed a bit with Twigclaw during the battle. As for Kestrel Star's kits, she has free living kits, a trio of siblings, all being 50 moons old. They consist of the strange and cruel Cherry Claw. He enjoys toying with cats and was the weirdo that messed with Bat in the battle just to scare him. Then there's the bloodthirsty Broken Tail, who we all know well in Galaxy Clan. She was Cricket Flower's killer that Shrewpatch had a vengeance against, eventually leading to her giving Shrewpatch that big scar on her side during the border skirmish. She actually just got her first apprentice, Hairpaw, who is faithful, and the medicine cat, Slate Aster, wants to steal him, but they're too scared to say anything to Broken Tail. The last sibling is Ant Eyes, and she is sneaky and has vitiligo. About a year and a half ago, she had a kitten with a kitty pet outside the clan, and has been teased about it ever since. Side note, her daughter is named Frozen Fish, and I love her. She also has vitiligo. Kestrel Star is disappointed in Ant Eyes for bringing weak blood into their family, and sees the clan picking on her as a good punishment. Creek Clan is the only other clan to have cats in the Dark Forest so far. In year three, I mentioned Sage Patch and his mate Lily Pelt, and how they tried to murder the deputy, but Yellow Hollow at the time ended up killing Sage Patch, and Lily Pelt had been chased off. Well, Lily Pelt had actually joined that group of rogues for a bit and was causing trouble for the clan that chased him out for a few years until Kestrel Star had enough and killed him, showing a display of what was perceived as strength to her clanmates. Sage Patch and Lily Pelt now haunt the Dark Forest together and plot ways to get back at their old clan somehow. And they actually have a living daughter in the clan named Dappled Pelt, who is a calm cat with a strong connection to Star Clan. They've seen Stoneleaf around, but... He has no interest in them, and that's basically the important cats in Creek Clan. I hope you like getting a small sneak peek into the neighbors of Galaxy Clan. I might mention a few of these cats and potential interactions in the upcoming years of Galaxy Clan. Which, speaking of, Year 7 of Galaxy Clan should be out either in two weeks or a little bit earlier. But with that said, if you enjoyed the video and haven't already, I'd appreciate if you could like, subscribe, and check out my socials linked below. My commissions are open if you'd like to support me that way, and I've actually reached over 3,000 subscribers now, and I'm in awe of you guys. You are amazing. You, you blow me away with how much support you guys give me. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week. Peace.